Hello, I'm Jesse Green, and I'm uh, sitting here, simulated face-to-face -face conversation with Mary Louise Parker, the actor and writer, and star most recently of The Sound Inside by Adam Rapp. Hi, Mary Louise. Hi. So let's begin with, who, who, who's the character you play? It's Bella Baird. She's a teacher, uh, a writer um, who hasn't written in a while. The, the play's kind of daring in that it gives us examples of Bella's writing. Uh, the play requires you and Christopher to read selections from each other's work. Have you had the pleasure of, with your own writing, of hearing it read to you? I have a couple of times, and it's really oddly satisfying. Um, even if it's something that I'm not that proud of, because I think I have a little bit thicker skin when it comes to my writing, a little bit more confidence. With my acting, I feel confident while I'm doing it, but, and while I'm rehearsing or in the process, but afterwards, like, I would never Google myself, like I would never, I don't wanna know what any, I, my, you would think I'd gotten a tougher skin after the years, but it's actually only <laughs> gotten worse. But um, writing, I just feel, I don't feel as like flimsy. I feel <laughs> like I feel like I can say, okay, that was overwritten, that wasn't good, or that, and that I can also say that's really good. I can't really do that with acting so much. But maybe you shouldn't be able to do that with acting. I don't think you should, actually. Yeah, that's a very good point. Is this play in any way particularly physically difficult to do in any way? Yeah, um, it was the most like arduous play I've ever done and I remember in Williamstown just sitting there and in Williamstown at the beginning like we didn't even have an end to the play and we'd barely rehearsed it enough and I just remember staring at the light on the ground going I just have to walk to that light because I knew that once it started it's just it's relentless in a way that I love like I love that kind of challenge I love being beaten up in that way by a play, and I, I love it being like nearly impossible. Uh, it's also, you also take a beating in the audience, which I also like in a play. I mean, I really like a play that sort of grabs you by your collar and says, I'm taking you here whether you wanna go here or not. My expectations were so low that people would even wanna listen to those first 12 minutes of me that, um, I don't know, I just, I wanted it to be, real and I wanted it to be happening and that I wanted to like put the people on the stage with me like the man in the hotel room I wanted them to be there and the doctor like I wanted to bring in as much as I could so it would be like happening in real time and also I could the audience is experiencing it with me and I like it when I feel like the audience is in the play and that's the difference between theater and film theater is proximity and theater is has an extra dimension. It's like there are however many dimensions there are in physics, and this has an extra one, which is the audience and the space where the actor and the audience come together. And you have to have that in order to have theater, and that's what makes it magic and dangerous and difficult and like infuriating and why I love it. Well, we hope this play will be done all around the country when when we can do plays all around. Well, the I want to do it again. I felt like I was just starting to get it, and I, I, you know, I want to do it again. So I'm praying I get to do it again. Well, let's set up this scene that you're going to perform. Bella has received this diagnosis. She's sort of entrenched in her, um, sort of the drudgery of her life and, and the isolation of her life. She's a, a, a fairly isolated person. And her world is sort of cracked open by meeting this student, um, Christopher, and by uh, her illness. Then she goes to the oncologist and learns that she's a lot sicker than she thought. The consultation with my oncologist yields only the grimmest of prospects. The tumors are rampant. I ask him what my odds for recovery are. He says, they are very low. I ask him, give me a hard number. He says, 20 to 25%, probably closer to 20. I tell him I, I feel fine. I tell him I can't smell any rot, C 
seeping out of me. I say, maybe I'm closer to 25%. He says, you're not. I tell him that my bowel movements are regular. I tell him that the pain in my abdomen is practically negligible. I tell him how I recently had sex with a man. Everything in that department felt normal. He says, good. I say, maybe that puts me at 23%. He says, it doesn't, and shows me my scans. He points to the healthy tissue, the unhealthy tissue. I say, oh, I'm being generous with 20%, he says. He says he wants to start me on a cycle of aggressive treatment immediately. The following day, a male nurse leads me to um, chemotherapy bay, which boasts a dozen oyster gray pleather recliners, which are separated by orange shower curtains. There are three vacancies. I'm allowed to choose my very own. I sit into it. It feels as though I'm accepting some sort of ergonomic living room quality death sentence. In a soothing voice, the nurse asks me if someone is going to come by and pick me up after my treatment. No, I say, I planned on walking home. The nurse advises that in the future, I should have someone come get me, that the medication can cause lightheadedness and the nausea will very likely only worsen with each successive visit. I'm only half hearing him. I'm too busy looking at the other patients. The catheters attached to the backs of hands, forearms, and collarbones, and the prophylactic arrangement of various tubes, ports, and fluid bags, all that appear to be growing out of these weakened bodies, not feeding anything corrective into them. Before my shower curtain is pulled for privacy, I see that I am sitting next to a woman who is so frail and weak, I have to resist the absurd impulse to reach over and break her arm. Her eyes are closed, her mouth is sagging open. She's wearing state-of-the-art, noise-canceling headphones. She's in agony. I get up and leave. <laughs>